evil men and seducers. The word seducers talks of being an imposter. Mm. Like being a fake person. Like you're appearing as one thing, but you're really not that person. Yeah. Um, the devil tries to implant imposters through all levels of society and in the church. Amen. The devil plants his people. Um, you know, the devil himself is an imposter many times because he wants to appear like he's someone good. He will, yeah, and he will try to lead people on uh, with him and his demons. And, and a lot of times they want you to think that, that they are God talking to you. Yeah. That they are the Lord, but it's really the devil. Uh-huh. You know, when I was a um, teenager, I had got into uh, looking into ESP, psychic powers and stuff, and I didn't know that the devil was behind that. I didn't think God was either, but they were just telling me it's, a, it's an unknown force. You know, the books I was reading, they are like, you can tap into this unknown force. Come to find out, it was the devil himself. <laughs> Mm. And, and when Jesus exposed that stuff, I had to cast those demons out of me, which yes, I did. Yes. Amen. And then Jesus came in, you know. Yes, yes, yes. That's a long story how yes. how I got saved. But there are imposters. You know, you got imposters in government. You know, uh, my wife's country, where she comes from in Congo, is going through a, a well. The president now is finally taking care of some rebels that have been in the eastern part and and trying to rid the whole eastern part from these people because they go into villages and will kill many people and take over to try to get the gold and the diamonds. You know, the country is full of gold, diamonds, cobalt, all kinds of stuff. Mm. So they're finding out that there was generals and and officers in the Congo army that are working for the rebel groups. Oh. So this happened many times, but, but just the other day, there was a soldier heard the commander talking on the phone to someone in the rebel army and telling them where they're going to be and telling them how they can attack the, the, the very soldiers he's commanding. Wow. And one of the soldiers heard him and, and shot him on the spot. <laughs> shot him dead on the spot. Wow. And then the soldiers were going to shoot him. And he said, no, 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 check his phone. And and they they called the number that was on there. And sure enough, it was the rebel, of, you know, the other people from the, from the opposite side. Wow. So he was an imposter. Yes. He was dressed in the Congolese army gear. He was an officer. And then you got people going in into all levels of society that are really not what they appear to be. They're there to do evil. Mm. That's in the political world. That's in national uh, things. And that's also in the church. Now, uh, look at this real fast. Go to 2 Corinthians 11. This is interesting. You see what I'm talking about? Because many people don't think about this. But it's true. In verse 13. For such are false apostles. Deceitful workers. See this? Yeah. False. False apostles. They could look like an apostle. They could dress like what someone would think an apostle looks like. Which they don't even know what the apostles really dress like. Paul was one of the greatest apostles. He said many times he didn't even have enough clothes. He, he suffered, you know, nakedness, but, you know, a lack of clothing. <laughs> yes. He was a true apostle. Yes, he was. And his clothes often had blood stains on them from being stoned to death and uh, all types of stuff, you know, being, being whipped with stripes on his back. But such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Isn't that something? That's part of those evil men that even get into the churches. Now, Satan loves to get into the church. He loves to get into the churches. He started out in the church, you know, you could say. He started out in heaven. 
He's the main one that is the main seducer and the main imposter. Mm. Yes, he is. And it says, such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. You got something to think about that for a minute. Transforming to make themselves appear like an apostle of Christ. They can have the title. Now, there are many men and women of God who start out good like the devil did. The devil started out good. Yes, he did. He was Lucifer. He was so bright and beautiful, the Bible says. Full of wisdom and beauty. Perfect in all his ways. He held such a high place with God. He started out good, and then he fell through pride because he was looking at how beautiful he was. He said, you were lifted up because of your beauty. Now, many ministers, many of the false apostles and the false teachers, they start out good, but they also follow the way of the devil. That's why the Bible says, don't let a novice or a new believer be a pastor because he can fall into the snare of the devil, the temptation of the devil. That's that same thing. You, you get lifted up in pride. And that pride blinds you. You begin to do things motivated by pride, motivated to, to help your own reputation and not Jesus' reputation. So, in the church, these things happen. And he says, they transformed themselves into the apostles of Christ. Now, you got both ways. Now, you got some people that started out good and ended up bad. Then you got satanic workers who were never good. Uh-huh. And they worked themselves into the churches. You know, there was a, there's a, a, a former top satanist, John Ramirez. He was like one of the top dogs over there in uh, New York in the world of darkness. He said his job from Satan, now Satan used to appear to him as a natural person. He would sit down with Satan, like Satan, like like like, like we see each other, Satan would appear to this guy. He, he, he was that high. And Satan would give him instructions, tell him what to do. His job, one of his jobs was to go into the nightclubs and find Christians that were in nightclubs. Because first of all, they weren't supposed to be there in the nightclub. You know? <laughs> I heard him talking about this a few weeks ago. He said, but Satan would lead him, and he would know who they are. Satan would, would operate with supernatural powers through this guy, and he would confront them and start telling them all about their life. Like mimicking the gifts of the Spirit. Right. And then bringing them under a curse. And his job was to get those lukewarm Christians that were going to nightclubs and to try to get them to fall away from Jesus totally. Wow. And then, you know, it's been said and it's been known by other witches and warlocks that Satan often will send people into the churches yeah. to pretend they're a Christian. So you got imposters on all levels. And he said that no marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan don't want you to know he's Satan. That's right. You don't want you to know he's the devil. And you know, I don't know why the Lord's having me share my testimony, but back then when I was studying those books, they said you could... You could go. You could have an unknown force do supernatural things for you. They call it that, the unknown force. And and how I got saved one day, the devil took me out of my body in the middle of the night, and I saw my body there on the bed. But I could hear the devil talking to me from the left side. I didn't see him, but he said out loud. He said, "I am the unknown force." He, wow. he said, come with me, and I will show you things that you don't know yet. That's what he told me. 
And I'm, I'm standing there in the air. I can hear him talking from this side. I see my body over there in the bed. I remember, in, but then I said, I was, I said, no, from within my spirit, I was able to go back in my body. See, so when he, when the devil spoke to me, he didn't say, I am Satan. He right. said, I am the unknown force. See, he, he will lead you little by little into his delusions and into his deception. He didn't want me to know he was the devil because I didn't know it was the devil. He talked in a monotone voice too. Uh, there he, he, he talked like this. I am the unknown force. Come and go with me. <laughs> That's how he <laughs> Very, very monotone voice. Yeah. And he wanted me to go travel with him in the spirit. Yeah. Man, thank God I said no. And the, the amazing thing is, when that happened twice, I got back in my body, I sat up, and Jesus Christ was standing in my doorway, <laughs> blocking the devil from me. Yes. That's what led me to start reading the Bible and get saved. So, the devil can come to you and try to make you think he's something that he's not. He tries to lead pastors on big time. Big, the big thing he does with pastors is try to get them to, to get proud. He'll tell them, man, you preach good today. You know, let's say God used you and you're, you're a pastor. He'll talk to you all the way home. Man, you preach good. The people were impressed by you. You know, he'll start saying stuff like that. <laughs> to try to get you thinking about how good you preach. He'll say all types of stuff. Oh, you were looking good in that outfit you wore too, and the people really loved you. And just to get you lifted up in pride. I'm telling you, that's exactly the way the devil works. And sad, sadly, many, many pastors fall for the devil, at least for some time, you know. He had me going for a little while, you know, with, with that spirit of pride early on when I started preaching, you know. And I learned a big lesson on that. But if the devil can get preachers to think about how great they are and they get their eyes off Jesus, then he can start working through them. People got to keep their eyes on Jesus and realize you can't do nothing without him. You're nothing without him. I don't care if you can preach good, teach good, lay hands, gifts of the Spirit working, healing and miracles. You have to think of yourself as nothing after that. Right. That is all Jesus. And you're just yielded to the Lord. Hallelujah. You can be humble like a lamb and also bold as a lion at the same time. And that's how we got to be. Yes. Bold to step out in faith and to operate in the things of Christ. Uh -huh. But stay humble as a lamb. Keep your mind in humility. Yes. See, he says, no marvel for Satan himself is trained into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You know, he had ministers as ministers of righteousness. They could be behind the pulpit and say, Bless the Lord, O my soul. You know, they can know all the right words to say. Uh -huh. But leading people into a ditch. Mm. The priests that had Jesus crucified, they knew the Bible verses. They would proclaim, you know. Yeah. May the Lord shine his face upon thee. And, you know, they could, they could sound very religious and very holy or righteous. But Jesus said, you appear righteous on the outward, but inward, he said, you're, you're full of wickedness mm. and envy and strife. He said it. So let's go back now. So how do we stay safe with all of this going on? And I'm glad you're wondering about that because this is what we're getting into right here. Because when you got such deception out there, <coughs> see, he says, but the evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Mm -hmm. 
some of the major uh, cults, like Jehovah Witnesses and different things like that. They're deceived themselves and they're deceiving others. You know, there's many different cults like, like that that are operating because they don't know Jesus. Amen. Anything that is not focused on Jesus Christ is wrong, for one. Yes. You can't get to the Father, Jehovah, except through Jesus. Right. Jesus is the first one you got to go to. <laughs> you got to call upon his name. He's, he's the only way to be saved. That's right. Some people make a big deal about they try to get you sidetracked and all oh, that's not how you pronounce his name and different things like that. Don't pay attention to those people who don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> that's right. Jesus got many names. Yes, he does. You can call him God. You can call him Lord. You can call him uh, Joshua. You can call him Yeshua Hamashiach. Mm. There's all kinds of names. Yes. And we know him generally as Jesus. And every time I, I called him Jesus, he responded to me. So <laughs> he never corrected me. Yeah. Here's what you got to do. But continue thou in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing of whom you have learned them. See, that's important. If you've been learning stuff from the wrong people, sometimes you got to forget everything they told you. Right. If you find out they're teaching false stuff. But here's the key. Now, he was talking to Timothy was blessed because he said and that and that from a child thou has known the holy scriptures yes and here's what we're talking about today which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus see it's only through faith which is in Jesus Christ that the scriptures will benefit you uh -huh. and this is what Timothy he knew the Holy Scriptures from a child. Saints, we got to know the Holy Scriptures. That's how we stay safe. Knowing the Holy Scriptures. Knowing what the Bible is talking about. We got to we, we got to become acquainted with what the Bible is saying because He says. All, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Yes. All scripture. All. The whole book has been given by inspiration of God. That means before the Bible was written, God inspired people to write what was written. Speak the name of Jesus.